Hello humans, it's me back again with another video. Sorry it's been so long since the last video. Um, been a busy old week and I have recorded a video, a uh, film review video, which is being edited shortly and will be with you soon. And um, I just thought I'd uh, put something together. I think I mentioned I'd do a run through of my 4K, um, 4K Ultra Blu-ray uh, collection, such as it is. It's not a massive collection, it's about 20 odd uh, films. So I thought I'd just do a quick um, Saturday night rundown of my 4Ks for you. Hope you're all keeping well and uh, healthy. It's very cold today in uh, sunny South Wales, and rather less than sunny. It's been snowing quite heavily. There's a, a bit of um, bit of drifting on the ground outside. Not too bad. Hopefully not too bad because I've got to go out and about tomorrow doing a bit of work. Uh, Sunday, um, as some of you may have know, I do a bit of filming as a supporting artist. I've got a booking tomorrow and I've got to travel across to Swansea in the morning so I'm hoping that the weather will uh, perk up a bit overnight but anyway enough of that let's get on with the 4k ultra uh, run through now as I mentioned I think again on a previous video now I know I've only done four um, I am a collector but I'm not an avid collector I don't have to have everything that comes out like uh, you see a lot of people on uh, YouTube with uh, blu-ray collectors they, they get every different version of every different film but I'm sort of selective. I just buy the ones that I want. And I don't tend to buy at full price. I tend to pick them up in sales and at CEX and places like that. Because I quite like the thrill of getting something cheaper than it's supposed to cost. My history of collecting goes back really to um, videos back in the 70s and 80s, or 80s rather, when videotapes became commercially available. I still have a massive, massive collection of them. Then I moved on to DVD. I was sort of reluctant to move on to Blu-ray because I thought, well, uh, can the quality be that much uh, better but as I think I mentioned before once I did see what high definition was like there was no going back really so I got a massive collection of blu-rays and when 4k's came out I was like nope that's definitely a format too far I'm not going to get invested in that but when I upgraded my tv a few years ago uh, to a bigger 4k tv or tv with hd capacity I upgraded my um, dvd player to one that's compatible with 4k's so um inevitably I found myself buying a few uh, discs as I say very few of these I paid full price for because I like to get them online um, and it's always worth looking on Zavi and Amazon and Zoom because they do sales every now and again HMV are quite good at the moment so I'm doing a run through of the discs that I got I got about 22 I think it is something like that um, I got a few more on the way uh, which have seemed to have been delayed in the post which have got on sale so there's about another four to come but this is the, um, the state of the 4k nation as it stands at the moment so i'll just run through them all in a little, little capsule sort of comments on each film if you like first one i have is a classic it's an absolute classic it's one of the great science fiction horror films alien this is the 40th anniversary 4k ultra collection a lot of these sets do have blu-rays as well so there is a lot of duplication because i've already got a lot of them on blu-ray but i just haven't got around to getting rid of them yet and what can you say about alien released in 1979 directed by ridley scott um in space no one can hear you scream i watched it not long ago it's lost none of its power it's still um terrifying and haunting and naturalistic what i like about it is that the characters they're just having these conversations and they're talking over each other and it's very much what life would be like on a like a space tug that's going through space um and of course you've got the classic um hr geiger or giga design of the alien which is never better than this film so alien is a must-have and it looks fantastic on 4k it's really sharp despite the fact that a lot of it is set in darkness that's alien number one in my collection the are alphabetical because that's the sort of person i am i'm a big marvel fan as i said i'm hoping to get all the marvel films on 4k and i'm working my way through picking them up here and there this is one of my favorite this is on steelbook now i'm not a massive steelbook collector but they do look nice and when i can pick them up i will pick them up and this is one of my favorite films ant-man um Sort of an underdog superhero. He's not one of the, the major big leaguers like Thor and Captain America and Iron Man. He's very much sort of third tier probably. But I think these films directed by Peyton Reed have a real sense of fun and pace and, and wit about them. Uh, fantastic portrayal of Scott Lang by Paul Rudd who's just born to play the part. And a lot of a renaissance role really for Michael Douglas as the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym. And of course we've got Evangeline Lilly as the character who goes on to become the Wasp and Michelle Pfeiffer who plays... Uh, Janet Van Dyne, who is Hank's, um, Hank's uh, wife who's gone missing. And of course, she turns up later on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So as a big Marvel fan, as I say, I'm hoping to get them all on 4K. Not necessarily all on uh, Steelbook, but Ant-Man I was very pleased to pick up. Um, and again, 
it's a Marvel film. It's full of vibrant colour. It just looks fantastic. It looks um, looks every dollar of its budget and well worth collecting. So inevitably, I also have Ant Man and the Wasp, um, a fantastic sequel for me. Um, possibly better. It's sort of got that extra confidence knowing that the first one was a hit. Um, again, it takes the story forward. Um, interestingly, of course, this was released after Avengers Infinity War and takes place before it. And of course, you've got the little coda at the end, which ties it up with the timeline of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, I love the MCU. I think it's so well structured and well put together and they developed it so beautifully um, across 20 odd films over 20 over 10 years. And everything sort of slots into place, and I just, I just love that sort of universe and world building. This is great fun, um, really good, terrific film. What I like about the Ant Man films, the stakes aren't always high, if you pardon the pun. Um, the sort of heist movies or action movies that don't have the universe and stake or the planet and stake. It's just, you know, quite low stakes. And that's quite nice. It's a refreshing change for the MCU. Um, Ant Man and Wasp, um, great film. One of those films I can watch any time, really. Um, more Marvel, I'm afraid. It's Avengers Infinity War. No, I haven't picked up Endgame yet. I've got it on Blu-ray, but I haven't got the 4K. I mean, this is sort of the ultimate superhero film, really. It's the ultimate sort of fangasm for Marvel fans that everybody comes together to fight the universe threat of Thanos. And this film's got everything. It's got all your favourite characters coming together in different combinations. It's got Thanos, who is... The interesting thing about Thanos, he's quite a sympathetic villain. He's identified that there's a problem in the universe and he's trying to do something about it. But what he does is, of course, incredibly ruthless. And yet to him, it makes a sort of sense. Uh, the universe is overpopulated. He's gathering together the Infinity Stones, which he will use to erase half the population of the universe. It's a sort of... Um, it makes him a sympathetic villain, even though he's ruthless and he does terrible things. And you're not rooting for him exactly, but you understand him. And I think that's something that Marvel does very well in its films. Um, to Infinity War is just a fantastic... I remember seeing it in the cinema, I was just, you know, blown away. Particularly the Marvel films. I was a big fan of Marvel comics as a kid growing up. And to see all these characters brought to the screen so well, with such good scripts and great actors, and of course state-of-the-art special effects, is just a dream come true. Endgame, which wrapped the story up, I watched a bit of it just last week on um, Disney+, Plus, isn't as good. It's great, but this is a five-star movie, and that's probably a 4.5-star movie. I think because you know you know from the end of this that Endgame is going to involve time travel and that always seems like a bit of a cop out even though they do it very well. But Infinity War looks gorgeous on blue on 4K of course and it was always going to be a must have. Uh, moving away from Marvel now we have Baby Driver, um, a film directed by Edgar Wright. Now, I'm a fan of Edgar Wright's films. Shaun of the Dead remains one of my favourite films of all time. I also love Hot Fuzz. Not so big on World's End, the third part of the Conetto trilogy. I think that sort of started off very well. I think that would have been better if it had been a film about the first half of the story. These these guys who are now middle-aged trying to relive their youths and how that doesn't quite work because they're not the same people anymore. I think all the alien stuff sort of fudged it a little bit. So that's not one of my favourites. I do like Scott Pilgrim. Um, Scott Pilgrim, I can't remember the full title of it now. I've only seen it once. It's one I must have a look at again. I'm not a computer gamer, so a lot of the references passed me by. But I did enjoy it. But Baby Driver is a terrific film. This came out about uh, three years ago, four years ago, in fact. And it's a sort of a heist film with uh, Ansel Elgort, Kevin Spacey, He Who Must Not Be Named, um, Lily James, John Hamm, Jamie Foxx. Great film, great action sequences, great music. It's directed with that sort of snappy pace that you associate with Edgar Wright. Um, great film. I've only watched it a couple of times. It needs a rewatch, really. But it's one of those films that really pumps you up. Um, great film. Really, really uh, good fun and, and a, th a thrill ride. Back to the MCU then, uh, with Black Panther, you know, the iconic uh, superhero film starring the late Chadwick Boseman. I did enjoy this. Not one of my favourites, I'll admit. Um, but it's a great film. It's a great, you know, visually it looks stunning. And again, on, on 4K, it's just breathtaking. Um, but I think the problem I have is there's a bit too much CGI in some of the fight scenes where Black Panther is sort of leaping around in ways that no human body that rubberized look you sometimes get with CGI and I think that it sort of takes the edge off the climax of it a little bit because you know you're just watching two CGI characters fighting and that's hard to invest in that but of course it's an important film culturally because it's the first proper black superhero it creates this world of Wakanda which is this incredibly sophisticated and technologically advanced civilization which is keeping the secret of this this mineral that is discovered by, I think it's vibranium. It's a great film, but it's it's not 
when I put on off on a quick fix of Marvel. Again, obviously it looks fantastic. I mean, it, you can guarantee the 4K discs all look beautiful. It's got the extra sharpness that you expect from um, the really high definition stuff. Uh, it's Black Panther. Still with the bees, we have Queen and Bohemian Rhapsody. Now this is a film which gets a lot of flack from people because it's, it's a, a sanitized version of the life of Freddie Mercury. But my argument is, it's not actually the life of Freddie Mercury. You know, it's called Bohemian Rhapsody. It's not called Freddie. It's about Queen and Freddie Mercury. And of course, the focus is on Freddie because he was such a charismatic front man. But it is, yeah, of course, it's sanitized because Freddie's one of the great um, hedonistic rock stars of the rock era. You're not going to have the warts and all story, but I think this hints enough at his lifestyle. And as, as fan, if you're a fan of Queen, you know about Freddie. You know he's legendary for his his the way he lived his life and he lived his life the way he wanted to live it i do like this film it's a great film it got i say got criticized a lot because it's sanitized my only my criticism really is the sort of the sort of fudging the timeline a little bit where things happen at times when you know it didn't happen like queen's first top of the pops appearance according to this is killer queen but it wasn't actually it was the year before with seven uh, seven seas of rye uh, things like We Will Rock You wasn't created at that particular time. The whole Live Aid thing is a bit fudged. It's all done for dramatic license, but it works. But I think if you don't know a little bit about the background of the fans, it, the band, it sort of rankles a little bit that they had to make those changes and compromises because the story of Queen and Freddie Mercury is fascinating enough. But I understand that you have to make some changes for, for dramatic purposes. But I think certain things were done here which take the edge off it slightly but it's a, it's a great film endlessly rewatchable um, of course it is um actually directed by dexter fletcher because the original director who i believe uh yeah of course brian singer he left the project uh dexter Fletch fletcher was parachuted in so the film he made was probably the film that brian singer would have made because obviously he had to pick up the storyboards and all the plans he couldn't put his own print on it but if you see rocket man the film about elton john which came out a couple of years back that's a much better directed film and a much more visual film because it was Dexter Fletcher's film and he was there from the outset so he managed to give it his spin. This is very much just a sort of a scene by scene version of the story of Queen and Freddie Mercury but I, I love it, it's a great film and it, you know the music is fantastic in itself. Uh, next up it's Back to Marvel, it's Captain America a Civil War. This is again on a lovely steel book. As I mentioned on the previous video I accidentally bought a second one which is now up on eBay and doing quite well. Um, yeah, this, until Avengers Infinity War, this was my favourite superhero film, and I think as I said last time, this is Avengers 2.5, it brings the characters together in conflict, and it's got the development, which is the thing I love about Marvel so much, you've got the Avengers that come together, something catastrophic happened in the second film, so the governments of the world step forward to put together the Sokovia Awards, which means that the Avengers can only use their powers when the governments of the world together allow them to do so, and of course that splits them into two factions. Um, Iron Man and, and his group think that yeah it's a good idea they should be policed and Captain America wants to go solo and he thinks that they should be allowed to step in and do things when they need to rather than when they're called. Great action sequences, I particularly love the battle sequences on the airfield in Germany where they all come together and have this huge fight. Still one of my most, my favourite action scenes in the whole MCU. And again, lovely Steelbook edition, Civil War. Something slightly different, I only watched this quite recently, I picked this up a while back but it was on my shelf for ages. Everest. Uh, this is a true story based on an expedition in the 80s or 90s, I think it was, to Mount Everest. Um, and it's a sort of a tragic story because the expedition doesn't go well. There's a terrible storm, terrible things happen. Um, I'm not a mountain climber. I like to keep my feet on the ground. But this fantastic achievement um, really brings back the, the danger involved. And I can understand the challenge and why people want to do these things, but it wouldn't be for me. Uh, it looks astonishing in on 4k of course the, the, you get the sense of the cutting cold and the desperation and the despair really when people get trapped on the mountain um really good film stars jason clark josh brolin john hawks robin wright sam worthington kira knightley pops up and jake gyllenhaal and uh doctor who and torchwood fans will look out for an appearance by um Naoko mori who played torchwood in um played torchwood who uh, played tosh in doctor who and torchwood she appears in a few scenes in this Everest, a really good film. I only watched this about two months ago, really enjoyed it. Next up, it is, of course, just drop one on the floor, Back to Marvel, Iron Man 3. Um, again, it's a lovely steelbook edition. Excuse me, I'll just pick up the one I dropped. 
Again, it's a lovely steelbook edition, which I picked up fairly recently. Zavi are doing quite a good deal on some of these steelbooks at the moment, if you want to pick them up. This is my favourite Iron Man film. I love that Iron Man, the original, because I remember seeing that. And I knew Iron Man because I'd read the comics back when I was younger. And I was just amazed to see this, you know, not very well-known character brought to life by Robert Downey Jr., this big explosive action film. Iron Man 2 isn't as good. I haven't seen it for a while. I must watch it again. But Iron Man 3, I think, is terrific. It's my favourite. It's the biggest, the most confident of the Iron Man films. It's got that fantastic little twist with the, the Mandarin, Ben Kingsley, who isn't quite who you think he is. It's directed by uh, Shane Black, who's unusual take for him. He usually does these quite gritty sort of British gangstery things. But he really steps up to the mark with this, delivers some great action sequences. Now it seems to be criticised quite a lot, but I think this is still top-tier Marvel stuff. And as I say, it's a lovely, beautiful-looking steelbook edition. The one I just dropped on the floor is uh, Jurassic World. Um, everyone was excited when the Jurassic Park franchise was revitalised. This came out in 2014. Stars Chris Pratt, of course, who is one of the world's leading action hero um, actors at the moment. He's done so many great action films. And I remember him when he played the slobby character in Parks and Recreation all those years ago. He certainly changed his look since then. I think he's this generation as Harrison Ford has the capacity to be. But this takes us back to uh, Elon Nubler when uh, Jurassic Park is actually now a real thing. It's, it's up and functioning as a proper um, leisure resort. But of course, inevitably, things go wrong behind the scenes. They've been developing some new dinosaurs. And of course, things don't go particularly brilliantly. Great film, probably the best Jurassic Park film since the first. Um, lots of great dinosaur action. Of course, the special effects have ramped up a notch since the original, but the original still looks great. Don't diss the original. Um, yeah, really enjoy this film. Look, again, it looks fantastic on 4K. The follow up, Fallen Kingdom, I was a bit disappointed with. Um, I, I didn't like the fact they destroyed the island, I didn't like the fact the tonal shift into like a horror haunted house thing in a second. It just didn't work for me, and I think the script was a bit ropey in places. So I haven't got that on 4K, but this is um, definitely one to look at if you get a chance to pick it up. Jurassic World. Of course, looking forward to, I think it's Jurassic World Dominion, which is out next year. Um, then we have another film I watched again quite recently. This is uh, Peter Jackson's version of King Kong. Now, King Kong is my go-to monster. He's the one I remember watching on TV when they showed the original King Kong film when I was a kid, probably 60s, 70s. And... You know, just love King Kong. He's just a fantastic, a, a giant ape. I mean, you can't, what, what's not to love? And I do like the um, the remake, uh, Peter Jackson's remake, is um, a real thrill ride. Obviously, the special effects are incredible, not just for Kong, but there's dinosaurs, insects, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's a real thrill ride. This is extended edition, which runs for hours and hours and hours, three hours and seven minutes, but it really doesn't feel like it, it flies along. So I watched it a couple of months back again. Of course looks fantastic on 4k and is a must for monster movie lovers i should be able to show you kong skull island because i ordered that from zabby last week it hasn't arrived as yet so i don't know if it's got lost in the post uh what with the weather and um the pandemic still raging i think there's a bit of a delay with the post so i'll give it a few more days but i was expecting that to have been here by now but that's on the way i love kong skull island terrific film um then we have the kingsman the secret service this came out in 2015, uh, first film where we saw um, God, I can't think of his name now. Good God, I'm getting old. Um, Taron Egerton, God, duh, um, playing Eggsy, who gets um, enlisted into the Kingsman organization, which operates from behind um, Taylor's shop in uh, Savile Row. Um, you've got Colin Firth, Michael King, Samuel L. Jackson as a badass supervillain. It's just nuts, completely nuts, bonkers film. Um, but looks terrific. Great action sequences. It's written by Jane Goldman, directed by Matthew Vaughan. Really pacey, I say great action scenes, completely mental film. Um, the sequel is more of the same, but not quite as good. And I'm looking forward to The King's Mum, which is a prequel, I think set in the early 19th or 20th century, which is supposed to be out by now, of course, but it's been delayed. But The King's Mum is well worth a look. It's Barking mad, basically. Uh, next up, we've got um, Logan, Hugh Jackman's final appearance as Wolverine, now, of course, known as Logan. Um, this is a great film. I've only seen this at the cinema, and I've watched this once, so again, it needs a rewatch. Um, 
terrific film very atmospheric set slightly in the future where logan is now sort of caring for patrick stewart's professor xavier who's got alzheimer's and um, it's not exactly a superhero film it's that character but it's much more visceral and violent and edgy and brings the character to um a sympathetic sort of ending for the character i think it's, it's a really good film and of course if we don't see the last of wolverine because uh, the x-men are with disney and marvel now and i'm sure there'll be a new version of the x-men along at some point but this is a really good adult sophisticated film about uh, a tortured man in a, a world that's quite content to torture him uh, logan is a terrific film one of my favorite films of recent years the martian directed by ridley scott and starring matt damon this was released in 2015 as well and i read the book by andy weir a couple of years before and i was really excited when i heard they were going to make a film about it because the book is just a terrific page turner it just doesn't stop you know it's the story of um the astronaut who is trapped on mars when um the mission is forced to flee the planet because of a sandstorm um his character is presumed dead but he isn't dead he's trying to find a way to stay alive and contact the earth so that they can send a rescue mission but that's going to take ages and is he going to be able to stay alive are they going to be able to get a mission to him it's really tense and nail-biting stuff the book is terrific when i heard they were doing a film i was a bit concerned because i've seen my favorite books and some of my favorite books in the past turned into films that have been a bit disappointed this doesn't disappoint it's a film made by ridley scott when you know he's got a good script and he's enjoying making a good film i think sometimes he makes films that he's not completely invested in but he was really on board with this and it's just a terrific film this is the extended edition it's not hugely extended i think it's uh can i ever find the times on these things yeah the extended cut's only 10 minutes more but it's uh two and a half hours it's just a really really good film and even the ending which you think is a bit far-fetched it looks fantastic when you actually um well i won't actually spoil it in case you haven't seen it but if you like space adventure i don't call this science fiction it's more space adventure but it's just a brilliantly film brilliant film and matt damon is superb next up i only had this recently this came last week this is the matrix again this is one i got in a sale from zavi so look out for that it's the original and best of the matrix films i have no interest in getting the other two because they were let's face it not very good this is the definitive one which i'm going to watch again because there's a new matrix film which i think is called resurrection which is due out later this year all being well but i will reacquaint myself with the matrix by watching this one i feel no need to watch the other two um this of course redefines science fiction cyberpunky sort of thing with keanu reeves Lawrence Fishburne, Carrie Moss, and the extraordinary story of what if the human race is a simulation. Um, brilliantly done. Uh, just a great film. It's just a shame they decided it with those two rather pointless sequels. Um, this is a film which I picked up a while ago, I think, at a sale, possibly at CEX. Quite an underrated film, I think. It's a steelbook edition of Mary Poppins Returns that came out, came out a couple of years ago, starring Emily Blunt and um, Lynn Manuel Miranda. I thought, and there was such a buzz about this when it came out, I thought, well, this is going to be one of the biggest films of all time. This is going to make her an international superstar. It's going to make him an international superstar. But it sort of came and went. Um, it, it was a tricksy sort of proposition, really, you know, making a sequel to the 1964-65 classic with Julie Andrews. It's a long time later to do a sequel. But I think it's very faithful to the original. I think that the songs are very good. The animation is in that style of the original, so it doesn't show off with too much modern computerized animation but it didn't really catch on i think people who saw it liked it but i think it only took something like 350 million at the box office and i to be honest i thought it was a surf for like a billion and a half i thought people would flock to it um it's a shame because it is a genuinely very good film i think you're know, possibly the only problem emily blunt's character is a little bit too buttoned up she hasn't got that sense of fun that julie andrews brought to the part but generally, I think it's a very good sequel. It's very underrated. So if you get a chance to pick it up, again, it looks gorgeous on 4K. Uh, I think it needs to be reevaluated because it is a really good film. Obviously, it's not the standard of the first one, but it doesn't let the side down at all. I'm just a bit disappointed that it didn't do better because it deserved to. This next one's actually a box set of three films. The Planet of the Apes trilogy, the recent Planet of the Apes trilogy, Rise, Dawn and War. Wonderful films. I mean, again planet of the apes was a bit compromised by tim burton's version in 2001 which was a disaster i love the original 60s and 70s films all of them even the slightly cheaper ones towards the end of the run and i even quite tolerate the slightly dull tv series so i, I really like the planet of the apes it's a great concept and when i heard they were rebooting it again i thought mm, I'm not sure about that but this is one of those rare rare trilogies that doesn't put a foot wrong it's, it's perfect 
Um, I do think the titles are the wrong way around. I think the first one should have been called Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and the second one should have been called Rise. Just my personal thing. But it's just great. It's a beautiful evolution. And it takes us right back to when apes started to become intelligent on Earth and how mankind was overthrown and how the apes persevered and thrived when human survivors were determined to do them down after the sort of end of the world. Fantastic performances. Me, a special shout out for Andy Serkis, whose motion capture performance as Caesar is just incredible. Three really good films. And it does, I think, square the circle with the original films, although there's still talk of more Planet of the Apes films. And if they do them, I hope that they do them as well as this, because it's just a fantastic trilogy of films that really, you know, proper, intelligent, adventure science fiction films. And they really, really don't let the side down if you're a fan of the original Apes films. And it could be a lot of people out there, so I don't want to look at those because I, I love the originals. These are just great, great films in their own right. Terrific stuff. Um, I've got this one now. This is a, um, this is one of the uh, Mondo series of steel books that you can often get from Savvy. I've seen a couple of YouTubers all quite keen on collecting these. This is the only one I've got, and this is A Quiet Place. This is one of my favourite films of the last few years, and I'm very much looking forward to the sequel, which should have come out a year ago, incredibly, and we still haven't seen it. Um, the story, of course, of the Earth. Um, attacked by creatures that hunt by sound only um, and we've got John Krasinski and Emily Blunt of course from Mary Poppins trying to stay alive in a world where they can't make any noise they have a terrible family tragedy and they move to live in this little farmhouse out in the countryside but these creatures are always around they've got to be on their metal all the time it's a short sharp punchy little film only 90 minutes or so but it's really tense there are some I remember watching it in the cinema there was some moments I was genuinely clutching the arms of the chair because it's like, oh my god. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the sequel. This is a lovely uh, Mondo Steelbook edition with um, one of these, um, what do we call them, L case type things. Uh, just a beautiful discount. When I saw it, even though the Mondo thing doesn't do much for me, it was nice to have it on Steelbook. Uh, it's one of those things you can watch anytime, really. We are nearly there, kids. We have another Steelbook. Um, this is Shazam. Don't get me started on DC. I think the DC. Um, extended universe or whatever they call it it's been largely disastrous uh, for every good film you've had two or three ropey ones I think the decent ones are Aquaman uh, Wonder, Wonder Wonder Woman and Shazam um, let's not talk about Wonder Woman 1984 if you don't mind I don't like to use too much bad language on the channel but uh, Shazam is great fun it's I, I can never I'm always sort of Shazam is Captain Marvel to me but I know Captain Marvel isn't that character anymore this is Billy Batson, a streetwise 14-year-old who can magically transform into Shazam, played by Zachary Levi from uh, Scrubs. Um, it's a great film, great fun film, some great action sequences. It's quite dark in one or two places as well. Um, but a really good human story about this child who's sort of trying to fit in, and he gets a chance to fit in with the help of this cow that he transforms into. Um, there's a sequel coming, don't know when, because this came out three years ago, I think, and course with pandemic has thrown everything back but there is a sequel on the way i'm looking forward to that this is a very nice steelbook edition and if you're going to get a dc film don't bother with batman and superman and justice league obviously i recommend this um just good fun and unpretentious more marvel i'm afraid it's a spider-man homecoming now this is the first of the tom holland spider-man films of course he appeared in spider-man civil war but this is his first uh Film Flying Solo, terrific film. This has got uh, Michael Keaton as the Vulture, a slightly different Vulture to the one that we uh, might be familiar with in the comics, and also features um, a character who is the Shocker, another Marvel superhero from the Spider Man genre. It also features, of course, Robert Downey Jr. and a little cameo as uh, Iron Man, as a Spider Man's mentor. Great films. I mean, Tom Holland is superb as Peter Parker and as Spider Man. If I have any criticism, I think that um, it would be nice now to see Spider Man as. Spider-Man rather than Spider-Man with a mentor. We, we had that in this film and in Civil War. We had him in Far From Home, which I haven't got on 4K. I have it on Blu-ray. Him struggling to come to terms with the fact that Tony Stark is not around. And apparently Doctor Strange is going to take over the role as his mentor in the next Spider-Man film, which is after Christmas. I don't know that Spider-Man needs a mentor. I know he's a teenager and he needs some help. But I think now he's sort of shown his mettle. And I think it would be nice to see him flying solo as Spider-Man without needing the assistance of an older superhero character, just a minor thing. And I think that these films are directed by John Watts, who directed that film 
uh, cop car a few years ago with uh, Kevin Bacon, which is worth tracking down if you get a chance. A really good film. Uh, but he's really stepped up to the plate with doing Marvel films, and these are great action-packed films. I think I could do a bit more fisticuffs because Spider-Man doesn't get involved in fisticuffs, and I always think of Spider-Man sort of getting involved in you know pop up punch-ups, which he doesn't do much in these films. That's a very minor criticism, but a great big confident film. And the stand-up moment of this, I think, is when um, Michael Keaton's character realises that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. There's a scene in the car, and it's the tension, and the, the threat is just palpable. It's it's a terrific film. Again, 4K, Marvel, they're just made for each other. Nearly there, two more to go. Uh, one of my favourite, uh, I don't know if you call it a cult film, but it's become a bit of a cult film, is Tremors. This was uh, released fairly recently on Arrow Video. Arrow, if, if you're a collector, you'll know they do these gorgeous... Uh, box sets of sort of classic cult films for collectors and Tremors is one of those great monster movies came out in 1990 it wasn't a massive hit at the time but it's it's rolled over the years and it's picked up a reputation it's been umpteen straight to DVD sequels and a TV series but this is the original looks fantastic in 4k it's the story of course of uh, Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward as these two um, Jack the Lad um, characters hanging around this town called Perfection in Nevada they're just about to quit and head for the big city to make a better living when the city comes, the town comes under attack by creatures they call Graboids, which is these giant worm creatures, as seen on the cover. Um, these carnivorous creatures which uh, are travel by sound, um, probably a bit similar to A Quiet Place, they travelled underground, sound attracts them. I watched it again when it came out recently, it's just a terrific film. This is a really good addition because you've got the Blu-ray, you've got a... Um, making of booklet you've got a poster cards arrow really go the extra mile with these sets and uh, for collectors they are must buys really but you know again i only pick up the ones i particularly like and tremors was just one i couldn't resist because it's it's one of those monster films if you just want an hour and a half of unpretentious monster fun then you're going to watch tremors finally for the moment i mentioned dc um wonder woman uh, is the only other dc film which i think you really need to have and i've got some of the I got the others on Blu-ray, but they're not ones I'd watch. But Wonder Woman is a great film, directed by Patty Jenkins. Fantastic performance by Gal Gadot. You've got Chris Pine as Steve Trevor. All set during World War One. It's the story of how she leaves them Surica, her home, and then just and learns about the outside world and the ways of men waging war. It's such a great film. Great action sequences, witty script, um, quite poignant in places with the World War One setting. Again, it has a slightly fudged ending with the CGI battle between her and the villain whose name escapes me. It's got so much heart and soul and, and you know, empowerment, of course, with this strong female character who is re envisaged for the 21st century. But then, of course, they screwed it all up with Wonder Woman 1984, which you sort of wonder what the hell went wrong there because that was such a disaster in so many ways. Um, so that's the 4K collection as it stands at the moment. There are a few more on the way. I was sort of hanging fire. I was expecting some to come today, but I think the snow put a stop to that so that's where we are at the moment hope you enjoyed that little run through my 4k so collection it's quite small compared to many i'm sure but why not if you fancy it leave a message down below tell me what discs you've got any particular discs you recommend bearing in mind i tend to go for sort of um fantasy science fiction horror type things i think they look you know you're getting the best out of 4k by big visual films maybe not so much character pieces i mean i think anything benefits from being done being screened in 4k but i think big action films you do get the benefit and I just realised I haven't got any Mission Impossibles in 4k that's something I must put right because I love that series um, so I hope you enjoyed that little run through my discs as it were uh, let me know what you've got what you recommend things you think I need to see uh, or have in the collection and uh, I will see you soon with another video there is a video review of Greenland as I mentioned which is on the way it should be up very soon plus some more bits and pieces during the week so uh, thank you for watching the vid uh, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff, and um, take care out there. I'll see you next time around. Bye bye.